Seven U.S. B-2 bombers dropped 14-ton bunker buster bombs on two nuclear sites in Iran, at Fordow and Natanz, following in the footsteps of what Israel did in recent days. These are weapons capable of hitting targets buried dozens of meters underground. But what kind of damage was done? And how did these weapons manage to penetrate dozens of meters underground? As you all have heard, the conflict in Iran is constantly evolving. And just a few days ago, the United States dropped 14 bunker buster bombs on two key sites of Iran's nuclear program. This was done through Operation Midnight Hammer. By the way, about the Iranian nuclear program. We actually made a video about it just a few days ago, and I'll leave the link in the comments below. The two sites targeted with these bombs were Natanz and Fordow, which are facilities where uranium is enriched. Both of these sites are located deep underground. But while the Natanz site is about 20 meters below the surface, the Fordow site is at least 70 to 80 meters deep, although the exact depth is still unknown. And that's why it's very difficult to destroy them with conventional weapons. For this very reason, the United States intervened to support Israel with their bunker buster bombs, dropping only two on Natanz and as many as 12 on Fordow. As part of the mission, 30 cruise missiles were also launched from the US submarine Georgia at the Isfahan site, which is where raw uranium is processed. But today we won't be talking about this latest attack. I mentioned it just to give you a more complete context. However, before we begin, I need to make an important disclaimer. This video does not address the topic from a political point of view, and I want to make it clear that Geopop is against any form of conflict, regardless of the parties involved. At the same time, in order to have a clear and informed understanding of what's happening in the world, it's necessary to also understand, from a technical perspective, certain military choices. And that's exactly why today we'll be focusing only on the technical aspects of the attack. So, we'll look at the equipment used, how the bombs work, and how an operation like this is carried out. We're doing this to provide you with technical tools for understanding within a much broader and more complex context. With that said, let's start by taking a look. Which weapons were used and why were these specific ones necessary? These ones in particular. The bomb used in the attack is the GBU-57, a mop. This is a guided munition that is 6.2 meters long and weighs about 14 tons, of which more than 4.5 tons are just explosives. What makes this weapon special is its extremely high penetrating capability. Keep in mind that it is believed to be able to penetrate up to 60 meters of earth, or 18 meters of reinforced concrete, which are absolutely off the charts values compared to any other weapon. How is this possible? It all comes down to the combination of three factors. First, it is dropped from high altitudes, usually 12 kilometers, so it gains a lot of speed. Second, it has a really significant mass, so it hits the ground with a huge amount of kinetic energy, which allows it to penetrate deeply. Point three, thank you. It is coated with a special steel alloy. Called England ES-1, it is very tough and allows the weapon to avoid being damaged while penetrating the ground. By doing this, the MOP bomb can reach structures located dozens of meters underground, detonating only when it has reached the intended depth and maximizing the damage. Obviously, the numbers I presented to you are nothing more than estimates, since, at the moment, the exact technical specifications of the weapon are not public. Even though these are just estimates, they still help us get a clearer idea of its power and, above all, its usefulness on the battlefield. This is an enormous bomb, so massive that, to this day, there is only one aircraft capable of carrying it, the B-2 Spirit Bomber. From a technical standpoint, the Northrop Grumman B-2 Spirit is a strategic bomber that measures 21 meters in length, 5 meters in height, and has a wingspan of 52 meters. It can travel at a speed of 972 kilometers per hour and has a range of 11,600 kilometers without refueling, although it can also refuel in flight if needed. Additionally, it can carry up to 22 tons of weaponry at an altitude of up to 15,000 meters. What makes it unique is not just its ability to carry as many as two bunker buster bombs at a time, but above all, its ability to be invisible to most enemy defenses, thanks to advanced stealth systems that incorporate both materials that are hard to detect by radar and a special shape that evades defensive systems. In fact, it is designed, specifically, to be able to reach hostile territory even on the other side of the world, 
hit its target without being detected by enemy radar, drop its bomb payload, and escape before the enemy has time to react to the attack. From this perspective, the V-2 is an almost perfect mix of stealth, flight speed, and carrying capacity. But how does the B-2 manage to evade radar? After all, it's a giant as wide as half a soccer field and can weigh up to 170 tons. The first reason lies in the coating applied to its entire exterior, which is made of a highly top-secret material capable of almost completely absorbing the radio waves emitted by radar. If these waves aren't reflected, in fact, the aircraft can't be detected. The B-2 is almost invisible also because of its design. It's designed to leave as little trace of its passage as possible. Seen from above, it almost looks like a single wing. There's no fuselage, no tail, and no visible turbines. Additionally, its profile is inspired by that of a diving falcon, so its aerodynamics are designed to displace as little air as possible. Even when flying at high speed, this design results in significant instability during flight. However, this instability is compensated for by a very complex system of computers that correct the plane's orientation in real time. The engines are also cleverly hidden within the wing structure and are designed to minimize the formation of air vortices and emissions. All of this makes the B-2 spirit the state of the art in aerial stealth technology. Just think that, despite the size of this bomber, the effective area it presents to radar is only 0.01 square meters, about the same as a bird. In other words, this means that radar detects this plane as if it were a bird. Anyway, all things considered, it shouldn't surprise us that the cost of each unit today is estimated to be around 2 billion euros each. And that also includes the complex and ongoing maintenance of these aircraft, all of which are owned by the United States. Going a bit further, in the current case of Iran, it was initially thought that the seven B-2s involved had taken off from the base. Diego Garcia, in the Indian Ocean, but it now seems more likely that they actually took off from Whiteman Air Force Base in the United States, and then refueled in flight. Even on this point, we will probably have more detailed information in a few days. The targets to be hit, as mentioned earlier, were mainly the two enrichment sites at Natans and Fordal. Once they reached the targets, the B-2s dropped the bombs, which, in just a few moments, struck their respective targets with extreme precision. The decision was made to drop as many as 12 bombs on Fordow and only two on Natans. This is because the Fordow site is located very deep underground and is quite large, so in order to hope to inflict enough damage, it is necessary to use many of these devices. And keep in mind that, at the moment, the United States, at least according to the data we have available, only has 20 of these weapons. And out of these 20, as many as 14 were used in a single night. So, at this point, the obvious question is, how much damage was actually caused to the nuclear facilities in Iran during this attack? On the social platform Truth, President Trump wrote that all nuclear sites in Iran suffered monumental damage. And the Department of Defense stated on X that it was a success. The IEA, that is, the International Atomic Energy Agency, is much more cautious in its assessment. As reported in their official press release published on June 22nd, there was damage at both targeted sites, although the most heavily damaged one is Natanz, which, in turn, was already the most damaged during previous Israeli bombings. The situation is different, however, for Fordow. The use of NLP bombs, at least in theory, should have been decisive. But in reality, so far not even the IAEA has been able to confirm exactly if and to what extent the bunker buster bombs were able to penetrate and damage the facility. This uncertainty is due to the fact that the facility is very large. And that's not all. We don't know exactly how many meters deep it is located, nor do we know what kind of barriers are present around the tunnels. As a result, it's difficult to estimate the effectiveness of each weapon, at least for now. Also because these bombs penetrate underground and cause damage deep below the surface. So on the surface, they don't really leave any particularly obvious signs except for the holes where they enter the ground. So, even when looking at satellite photos, it's not that easy to assess the actual amount of damage caused. So, this is what happened between the United States and Iran, from a strictly technical point of view. As mentioned earlier, this is a complex topic, especially from a geopolitical perspective, and we want to give you a technical overview of it. That way, you can better understand what's happening and develop your own critical thinking about it. Alright guys, thanks for sticking with me up to this point. 
If you have any other questions or curiosities, make sure to write them in the comments. And we'll see each other again in the next video.